defeated. Uh, he gets to come back. Uh, he's going to be the one to um, eventually amaze the world with brilliance, knowledge, political savvy, economic abilities. He'll make the world one. And so David Spangler, father of the New Age and so forth, you know, talks about a Luciferic uh, invocation, uh, which was even done at the UN. So doors keep getting open on all levels, and the will sometimes is opened, mm, I want to say willingly, and sometimes, again, on the, on the demonic side, you never get, I can, you can never trust they're telling you the truth. Right. I mean, you can never trust. They, they, if, if, if we understand the art of deception, um, they are the masters. They are the founders. Um, Jesus said, Satan, when he lies, he speaks his native language. Right. No truth left in him. He's disintegrated into just that. People have asked me over the years, Chris, do I believe Satan really believes he'll win? I do at this point. From all that I've seen on the demonic realm, and I've heard them scream at me and yell at me and say things, I do believe they, they think they can pull it off. Um, now, let's let's talk about that. Um, what specifically do you uh, say when when uh, t driving out a demon? Take us through the process a little bit. Well, sure. The um, excuse me. The um, the bottom line for it is Luke ten. Jesus said very clearly in the perfect tense in the Greek that he has given every believer in Christ authority to trample. Literally, this is very powerful. Um, to trample, you know, the demonic realm, to overcome the Greek word Nike, meaning a decisive victory. So, when a real believer understands that and you and has and acknowledges an appropriate set of authority, when they do encounter a demonic presence, uh, it's always done in an oral sense, spoken. Uh, matter of fact, uh, almost like ninety nine point nine percent of the time, Jesus never touched a demonized person. Uh, when we deal with it, it's just a simple thing. Of, sometimes we already know that it's there prior to even calling it up or commanding it to come forward because they usually can tell who we are before we can tell who they are. Uh, if they're in a person, they're looking, they're spotting. We have to realize that they are real entities with superior abilities. They are the founders of telekinesis and clairvoyance and, and all those kind of powers that they give to individuals. And so they're already reading me sometimes before I get into a room or when I walk into a room. But with discernment, the Spirit of God, there's times you can feel it, sense it, know it. God gives me a word. And then we go into, um, you know, commanding it to come forward without harming the person. That's part of the process. Sometimes if they just manifest openly, like has happened a number of times, or even through the person to the ground, we immediately command you, you know, not to harm the individual, not to harm anybody else in the room. You will be contained. It's literally just giving orders because of the authority of Jesus. Uh, when I was a Buddhist Taoist, that was never, you know, before I became a Christian, they, nobody ever taught us that kind of stuff. And spirits, it was a whole different world. Um, demons don't listen to any other name. They don't listen to any other authority. But when the a real believer with that authority exercises that orally, um, and the pre and then you can feel the presence of Christ literally coming and striking. It's almost like you can feel a rush of the power of God. Uh, that's when the demons scream, literally, just like the scriptures. They scream. They uh, they they agonize. Sometimes they want out of there quick, and sometimes. But that's when we'll say no. Not until you know you say you tell. You know, sometimes the Lord will give me a discernment that there's 13 spirits. And I'll say, how many is there? You need to tell me the truth. And they'll say seven. <laughs> and this happens often. Um, and we'll say, no, there's 13. And, you know, you're lying, you know, God. And and uh, there's been times we say, we're going to send you to the abyss. They fear. That's one thing, Chris. They fear, absolutely fear going to the abyss. Uh, none of them ever want to. Um, some of them just want to cuss you out and get out of there. Many of them are afraid that higher ups in the demonic realm, in, including Satan himself, may, you know, judge them or harm them or do things to them if they tell anything, uh, or they'll get in trouble for losing a battle. Um, to them, it's it's all real war. It's it's real stuff. It's real entities. Uh, there's been times where I've seen we had five officers in the room with a guy that. We believe killed two girls here locally in, a, in just a ho horrific slaughtering ritual. Um, when he showed up, he first, first came after me to attack. And uh, then when all the officers brought him to the ground, he was leg-chained and arm-chained. And then he would go 
completely limp and quiet. Then he would look up like himself and say, what's going on? He looked very passive. And if you start to get close to him, you can see instantly the change. And this horrific voice screamed out in front of all the officers, we are the legions that shall rule the earth. And the officer, of course, just picked him up, uh, legs and arms, and, and took him to a psych ward. 